Hello, one and all. Welcome to Seasons Beatings, our 2023 recap show. Um, yeah, it's been emotional, man. Yes, it's been a roller coaster. A roller coaster of a year. Um, book ended by two monumental interviews, kicking off the year with Kurt Angle, ending it with Daddy Ass. Just on crazy times. Come on. What a hell of a year for interviews. Hell of a year. Hell of a year. Hell of a year. Hell of a year. Um, so yeah, that was the reason. <laughs> I'm summary. thinking, like, we could do like a Scrooge-esque type uh, video thing here where we're visited by three goats. And ah, our interviews. I like that. Hey. I like that. Hey. That's good, that. Hey. Good, that. Um, Sorry. Anyway, that's where my mind, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a mad year, hasn't it, to be yes, fair? Yes, it's, um, been, it's been, you know what, like, it's one of them where we spent, like, I think, did we know at Christmas time last year that we might get Kurt in January? So we were like, our oh, next year's. We've been speaking to Kerr for about two years. Yeah, yeah. So we knew so we were probably like, well, let's let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, we knew midway um, through last year that we'd ha- we'd had a date secured on the fourth of Jan. Yeah, but it was like months out. And we were like, <laughs> I don't know, man. He's gonna forget about us. And you know honest. what? To be fair to the man, he did not. He did not. Um. So, like, we kind of knew about it, but I suppose that was like, and you go, oh, what's next year gonna be in store? Because you always like, not that we're always trying to go, oh, let's do bigger and better. We just need to have fun, but. You kind of set your own little internal goals, don't you? And go well. You do. You know, who can we get? What can we do? Yeah. You know, it's it's fascinating because I feel like every year we've said we've peaked. Can't possibly t- <laughs> top this. Like year one was like we had our first interview with Thunder Rosa. How how did like nice. no way yeah. couldn't believe that. Um, year two we have D- was it DDP year two. Uh yeah, I think we got DDP yeah, with Mickey James at one you know, one point. Um, we had fucking LeBron. <laughs> Sorry, you know, remember that meme. <laughs> <laughs> the brown day <laughs> we had um, you know Hall of Famers Godfather Medusa you know who, we had Medusa and Santino in like the space of like the same on the same day I think it might have been on the same like, day holy I was, that was everyone. like so we were like how can we top that and then this year you know kicking off a Kurt Angle closing with Billy Gunn like yeah. the sprinkle of Al Snow the sprinkle of Al Snow in there um, like wait loads of shit going on like it's it's almost a disservice to try and listen because you like you instantly like go through in your head, don't you? But there's, there's yeah. been tons like I mentioned to you, like you know, speak. I I love doing the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> I absolutely loved our Barry Blaustein interview, yeah. and it, similarly this year, I absolutely loved speaking to Sandra and yeah. getting behind the scenes on that one. And you know, she's an absolute sweetheart, and she's always like been like really interactive with us ever since as well. I think that's awesome. But um, I love seeing more about how it all works. You yeah, know? I think no, that's definitely. Awesome. Yeah. I think it, it's quite. I, like, I love that little niche that we've got of the behind the series. Mm. Um, and one, one, com- well, what, depending on when we put this out, mm. you've probably already seen it, but we've got obviously um, a couple of different things in there now, a couple of other ideas as well in terms of yeah. who we could speak to because, you know, wrestling's more than just the wrestlers. I think right? that's it. Like, people maybe sometimes don't even realize how much production goes into it. Mm. I'm not just talking Cody matches, I mean, like, <laughs> generally, right? And um, that's what I like learning because even we don't you know I like obviously we're aware enough to go well let's see if we can speak to those people but like when you start speaking to them and you learn about how it all works you're like god that's like there's a shit ton of work involved in this you know yeah no there is yeah. there's so much that goes into it and I think as well like I love speaking to the the up and comers as well yeah. like obviously we've had like the likes of Lady Bird on in the past and um, Jeremy Prophet and people like that who are people that you like you can just see on the cusp of making it yeah and this year we had Maddie. So rumors are she's signed with WWE now, yeah, yeah, or at least accounts, it's yeah. in the Performance Center, mm-hmm. which is awesome. But Izzy Moreno, obviously, yeah, yeah. fucking, she's definitely the, the future. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I love that we can speak to, you know, Hall of Famers who are like in the twilight of their careers and like what with that legacy, and then people are looking to create their own legacy, yeah, and yeah. and then everyone in between who who's made a legacy that doesn't get recognized. Yeah, yeah. I think having that kind of diversity of guests and stuff. Yeah. Is, um, is something I, I want to keep doing really yeah no that's, I totally agree and um, we've always said we don't want to just like scramble for interviews and be like oh we we'll speak to anyone we get it's always people that we want to have a yeah. conversation with and, and learn about because I think one thing I've always enjoyed is the fact that we're not trying to like get all these I mean we've we've hit the news a couple of times with bits and bobs that have been said but we're not like trying to find these buzzwords or trying to ask about controversial things or anything no. we just we just want to learn more about them and I, I, th- I think I think that's that's something that hopefully people who watch our show know about us as well is we're not those kind of people who 
want to make our guests squirm and ask no, them no, make no. it we want to have fun but like yeah, they've been gracious enough to come on our show and we want to you know ha- like remind them of the good times and talk about like the things that they love to do and things so no. you do get a lot of interviews out there where it's the opposite I, of them. honestly i think i wonder about it sometimes like, what is the intent like we week in week out we do our show and we talk about our feelings on wrestling sometimes we make dickish comments right and we can because we're fans and we're allowed to be toxic <clears> right <throat> um but then the aim of getting an, a well-known person in the business to make a comment, it's basically in the same vein as every fucker on the internet or the likes of ourselves would make mm-hmm. about how they feel about something, just so he can be quoted and going, oh, look how negative he is. It's like, yeah. aren't we all? Yeah. Like, I've literally just in the previous segment just been moaning about things I didn't like. And you go, well, <laughs> you know, we all have the freedom to do that, but then we sit and look and wait for something for a celebrity to say. Yeah, that we can then quote it and go, Oh, you've seen what he said about you've seen what he said about WWE. It's like, Yeah, oh, we just have a conversation with him. Yeah, because what's the point? I'm not, I'm not looking for that controversy. It's no. like, don't be wrong, conversations naturally happen, and we've had stuff like that before where they've offered mm-hmm. their opinion and the news have picked up on it, which is sad. And I love it when the news pick up on stuff. I loved it when, um, like Medusa got quoted a few times again. <laughs> like, that was awesome. some of those quotes is like. They were trying to be a bit wild with it, but like Medusa took it in his stride and, yeah. and was made up at the coverage it got. Yeah. And I'm like, that's awesome. You know, so I'm not I'm not totally dissing the, the, the media outlets in that sense, but I just think like we're not trying to trigger them at no. the same time. No. And I think, you know, a very polarizing figure in the wrestling world who absolutely does not deserve to be a polarizing figure in any way, shape, or form. We were lucky enough to have Mega Perec on. Yeah. Um, and some of the stuff we've seen from fans and, you know, what people have said about her and things just absolutely disgusting. Like, yeah, it's unreal, isn't it? Like, yeah, like instead of celebrating all her success to so what she's done for AW, what she's done in the legal world at such a young age, um, and you know, like everything that that company's done, like they just try and find, yeah, they just some, crap. they want to jump in on blaming her for everything they don't like, yeah, and deciding things like her being pivotal in CM Punk going and stuff like that. When she probably, yeah, like obviously, you may want some sort of legal uh glance over these things, mm. but. At that point, the decision's made. They just want to make sure that they're, they're watertight. Yeah. And I don't know how involved she was in that sense, but if you're going to fire someone, you make sure you're covered legally, don't you? Well, apparently, that was, apparently it was uh, Brian Danielson, wasn't it? <laughs> he <laughs> was like, the one's like, punk, was fired. There. And he was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think that whole thing. And also, I thought that was interesting because we, we, we broke the news almost that All Out was going to be literally the week after All In. Yeah. But at that point, nobody knew. Yeah. Um, and that was obviously Mega was mentioning it on our show. And I always I thought it was fast because we got picked up by um, Uncle Dave, didn't we, in Wrestling Observer? Yeah, we first and, um, time it happened actually. Didn't it? Yeah, and um, God, Brian Alvarez. I remember him talking about it, and he just didn't credit us once. Didn't uh, say where that. the interview was. I was like, "Fuck's sake, like, Brian!" Just I was like, "Help the little guy yeah, a little bit." Jesus. Jesus, like you could just say, um, you know, the following <laughs> they've got. But I mean, that's one thing I think we've certainly discovered this year is that, like, and this is no thingy to Brian specifically, but it just sort of leans yeah. into it is that people are very sort of possessive about their niche. So like. Um, like because we've had like certain responses and stuff going out where they're like being really protective. It's like we're not we're not trying to step on toes, man. We're just yeah. trying to do our thing and enjoy stuff. Yeah, like and it feels very much like people are, like people think like there's some sort of nefarious motive sometimes, and you're like, mm. well, you know, then no worries, we won't get involved, kind of thing. But yeah. it's not, you know, we're not, we're not trying to be dicks. No, you know, if it it feels like there's a, a bit of a kind of like like a, almost like gatekeeping in the wrestling oh, there's world. There's definitely some massive like, gatekeeping there. Either people. It's hard to explain, isn't it, without going into detail, but like, yeah, whether, and we, we, whether we're it's agents or companies <laughs> or like whatever. Um, yeah, like, I you... think there's definitely an element of it's it's who you know, uh, like a lot of the time. And it's not totally and 100% the case because obviously we've managed to get some great interviews. Yeah. Um, and I've seen a lot of people have got some great interviews, mm-hmm. but there's definitely a level of it's who you know, you know, yeah. Um, and you, you definitely need that sort of in. With a lot of company, and I don't how you get there. Hopefully, we'll discover one day. Don't know. Yeah, but like I think, I think it, it's just with time. I think um, mm. if you look at because obviously, like we had Chris Van Vliet on this year, who's we did, awesome yeah. guy. Um, like it's safe to say he's he's the top dog in the wrestling interview. I would space, say so. Right? In all fairness, you yeah. literally had Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan on in the space of a couple of days. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. And all then right. like Jericho, like, yeah, yeah. 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 he's just. A lister after A lister, you know, yeah, yeah. the rock a million times. And the fact is, Chris has been doing it for God over a decade. Yeah, and he's before put, that, he's, he's been in the entertainment in, yeah. world and everything. Yeah. But he has been, he's, he has been grinding. Thing, like, and that's the thing with Chris. Like, he, he, 
obviously has a, a real love for wrestling because he he's been doing this sort of interview game and that media stuff for that long and he, he was doing it for like movies and and, and such like that. it wasn't mm-hmm. just wrestling like no. wrestling seems to be where he's deliberately focused you know yeah but um like that purely out of passion i imagine because yeah. like we've seen him it's... we've seen him speak to that the last from um 50 shades and stuff like that yeah like, i mean well, he, he, actually, um, he was interviewing margot robbie and uh ryan gosling uh, for the Barbie movie, and it was like it felt so weird. So just yeah, like still stuff wrestling, like that. wrestling, 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 wrestling. Hollywood. Yeah. Wrestling. I was like, that's so mad. And you know what? Um, Fair play to the man. Absolutely. You know, I'd speak um, to Margot Robbie if I could. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, I'm Ryan. Probably. I think as well. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think as well though. Like, um, it it just goes to show. I think this time last year, maybe, um, had we not long just hit a thousand subs on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But now we're like what five point. Six. Nearly six thousand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mental, really. So yeah, it's, it's I awesome. think I think it it, do, it just comes with time, doesn't it? And like the more and more that we do, it's like it, it's funny because we've always very much said we don't want to become an interview podcast. I think that must be so fucking ch- and fair. Kudos to to the ones out there that are right. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of them. Um, it it is. It's probably the most stressful part of what we've done, isn't it? When you mm. know you've got an interview lined up. It's almost anxiety inducing. Yeah. You're going to get the right questions. Is yeah. it going to be entertaining enough for the person you're speaking to? Are you going to give them enough time? You're not going to take too much of the time. Yeah. You end up thinking about it. Think, it, like, it takes a lot of fucking energy, yeah. to be honest with you. And I can't imagine having to line up one guest a week. Yeah. For 52 weeks of the year. I know, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah. you know, credit to anyone who, who is exclusively yeah. an interview show. It's got to be like a full time job. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. And again, we'll, we'll never do that, I don't think, because no. there literally isn't an. And it sounds, I don't want to make it sound like bad, but I don't think there's enough people out there that we could legitimately speak to that we want to speak to. And that's yeah. the difference. And I mean, I'm not saying those who do don't, it don't want to I speak think, to them. But. No, I think that the thing is, I think, I think that's the difference though, where you say about full time, mm. because like Van Vliet's a prime example. He's able to do this as a day job, yeah. right? And he's so grateful for the fact he's able to do it as a day job. But because you can do it as your day job, you can absorb so much more content. Like where we have day jobs, we have families and stuff, so I can't I can't watch like as an example, I, I know I'd probably enjoy MLW. Mm. I can't watch a great deal of MLW. So a lot of the people in MLW I don't really know. Like yeah. we were lucky enough to speak to Alex Hammerstone, mm-hmm. who I do know, who's an awesome guitarist as well. Yeah. And like he was one of the, the bigger parts of MLW. So you hear about him and you he's got a notoriety. But as far as the roster goes, like if it was your day job, yeah, then you'd probably get more involved with all that. And then the amount of interviews would increase. Mm. because you then know who they are yeah like i wouldn't want to be disingenuous and be like i have no idea i have to do my research and then interview them. yeah like you'd have to live wrestling you'd have to exactly. watch it all the time and watch the indies and all yeah. sorts at that point yeah but that would be that would be the day job yeah 100 you know? which is why i think like part of me would love to step up more of the future focus side of things you want to step up step up <laughs> but then it comes back to that of like i don't want to be disingenuous because yeah. i need to have seen them and they need to have caught my eye and need to know about them and be interested in them and think they've got something, you know, to want to talk to them. Mm. So, yeah. But I think yeah. interviews are here to stay. Obviously, we'll do, we will do more. Do you know what year. I'm really pleased about this year? Go on. The What If segments. I thought mm. they were fucking awesome as an idea. Yeah. I enjoyed doing them. And then, you know, not that it's all about views, but they didn't seem to be taken. And I was like, oh, that's a shame. No. But this year, they seem to have, like, they, they seem to be enjoyable. Yeah. And I think, I think people are getting, hopefully, the same enjoyment as we are out of them, which is nice. Yeah. I think it's it's mad, really, because we did The Undertaker Streak, which was a what-if that I was I really enjoyed. So yeah. One of our better ones. I think it got, got, like, six views or something on YouTube. Yeah. Actually, not even kidding, like, literally six views. Yeah. Um, But then we've done other topics this year. I think we already did two of them, but they've each got, like, a couple of hundred views each. And it's mm-hmm. like... You know what yeah. I mean? It's mad. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard, like when you're trying to fight with the algorithm as well on YouTube. It's hard to like get things seen. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And game, we were never here to go. Well, let's let's make money, you know, and all this. So I'm not overly bothered about the views, but you look and go, some of this doesn't make sense sometimes. And like, I get that it'd be really hard to like have the Undertaker streak, the what if for the Undertaker streak to to show on the algorithm. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you, at the end of the day, if you're gonna to have to go ten clicks deep onto your search bar, we're not getting seen. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then you go, well, what what was the difference with the ones we've had this year? Mm. Like, are YouTube just allowing them to be seen and recommended yeah. a bit more? I don't know. It's but strange. I love the fact that they are getting a, a little bit more, and yeah, you know, it's a it's a it's a grind again. But I think with content like that, 
yeah. that hopefully is evergreen content so it's, mm-hmm. it's not going to date but with content like that it's a case of like you, you just have to build up something you know people go oh, i like them so i'll, I'll, I'll yeah, tune into them or I whatever so and I think as well, like, you know, the YouTube side of things is great. So obviously, we we went on to YouTube. We started off just pod, like an audio podcast. That is YouTube. true. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've had some big successes as well this year from an audio standpoint. Like we've got number four in Ireland or something. Yes. Um, you know, consistently in Denmark, back in the US charts and the, quite high in the, the UK charts. And it's become a lot more competitive, I think, to chart now because everyone's got a podcast. That is true. Every wrestler's got a podcast. And it's like, and why I'm would like, you want to listen to us too? even started one. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so it's, it's, it's fascinating really. And I, th- I like, I remember, I can't remember who it was I was speaking to, so apologies if you listen to this, but I was chatting to someone on Instagram. Um, and I, I think I put a post up of like our, our most viewed or most listened to episodes. Um, and like Kurt Angle wasn't even in there. And I was like, whoa, why is it not? And I was like, well, because he's got his own podcast. Like, yeah. people you, go to you can Kurt, tap into Kurt's Kurt life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that yeah. in itself Which makes has sense. become more like, interesting. The same with Foley. We, we wanted to get Foley. We spent a long time trying to get Foley. And, and I appreciate he didn't want to do podcasts. He didn't really out. There's not a lot out there that he's done. Yeah. Uh, but now he's doing his own. And if you want to learn about Mick Foley, that's where you go. You isn't go direct it? to the source. So, like, as much as I would still happily speak to him any day, mm. I get that, like, as a content point of view, you go to Foley to, le- to learn about Foley. Yeah. So it is exactly. what it is, you know. So conscious of time because yeah. we're professional and we need to wrap up because we've got to do an interview in a second. Yeah. Well, but, it's winter, so you want to wrap up. Um, just curious, next year, next any year. goals, any plans? Goals for next year. For the show, um, for the channel. For I everything. actually want to do a little bit more um, content with Mutuals. We've had some good fun this year with our, um, and I still really love the uh, Get the F Out. Yeah. Um, so I want to do a couple more Get the F Out. I want to hopefully join in a bit more with, with some of the, like, because it, I know we've been invited to a couple of things. I know we've invited a few over, but I think that kind of we've met some really great, um, yeah, you know, mutual content creators, and I think that that bit more interaction would be quite fun for next year. Yeah, I think I think that's something I I agree with that. Like we've got some really loyal followers, some really loyal fans. Like Spotify Wrapped was showing we were in like top, you know, people's top most listened to, you know, what I mean? awesome. and things like that, yeah. which is really cool. But I feel like from a community standpoint, like we've got the prediction series, which I think we've got a big community with. But it'd yeah. be great to also build out our like podcast community as well yeah. as you say like we've had guests on and we've been invited to be on a couple but like yeah just make just having that you know what i mean more community feel like i know a great example i think um scw um steve like i i joined quite a bit of his live shows on youtube and stuff like that and like he's got like regulars who are always yeah. on his live shows and always commenting See, and, and, that's stuff awesome. like that. and it's yeah. like i like that and i don't know whether we'll ever go down the live show route um, yeah, I, I mean it's difficult to know because the hour we have to record we might not get the uh, response it yeah. deserves but so who yeah. knows maybe who we'll knows. try that once maybe when it becomes our day job yeah maybe if you, um, if you, if you put like $10,000 each into our Patreon <laughs> which we never started <laughs> yeah the thing you said we we're going to do last year is more long form content like documentaries and a Patreon we didn't do either and I mean we still want to do a documentary don't we do we? Um, maybe yeah. maybe 2024 is the year we'll yeah. see um hopefully you've enjoyed um listening watching along with us musing yeah um and obviously if you've supported in any way by watching any of our interviews any of our shows read any news article that was you know came from what we've done and things like that you know just appreciate it um you know we i was gonna say we we, i don't quite know how to say this or alien and everybody's gonna say we can't do it without you i was like well we (laughs) We could. We still would. <laughs> but <laughs> it's nice that you're here. You know what I'm well, saying? Because, yes. <laughs> like, you know, one thing... We could do it without you. Yeah. But it'd so, be quieter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. What's happened to the subs? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's hopefully funny. you get what I mean. But, yeah. Um, yeah. That's we, a lovely sentiment, maybe. We love you. And thanks for being here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, hope you all have a wonderful new year. And here's to an awesome 2024. Catch you on the next one.